The Great Step, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Step. It was not hard not to notice this guest of St. Petersburg with an exotic look, wearing unusual luxurious clothes. He stood out among the big delegation, being young, handsome, and talented in music. People around could not understand what he was singing, but the melody did not leave anyone indifferent. The sun was shining, and the shadow fell upon his face. The girl came closer whether to listen to Q or to look at him. In those days, a lot of people used to visit the girl's father. The whole family was in the spotlight of the Russian Empire. This handsome singer came from its suburbs. When he started singing, she was confused. What is his name? What is this strange instrument? Oh, it is so sunny today. Usually the weather is not so pretty in St. Petersburg. And this bright song matches the atmosphere of the palace and the significant event in the life of the empire. On Wednesday, March 23, 1855, Tsar Alexander II hosted the delegation. There is an evidence that Tatimbet played some of his works on the Dombra. The truth of these claims still needs to be convinced. It is, however, indisputable that the musician was awarded. The hero of this legend was born in the place called Mirzhik. Now it is Kazi Bikbi, district of the Karaganda region. The unusual story about the trip to the Russian Tsar is only a small part of Tatimbet Kazangapov's eventful life. He came from a noble family and he should have become a bee or judge. The talent of Kui Shi, poet and musician, brought to this young man more fame. Is it true that the daughter of Alexander II fell in love with him? What kind of relationships did Tatimbet have with great Kazakhs like Shokan Valikhanov and Abai Kunanbaev? Мой дедушка был внуком Татимбета, сына сын Мусатая Шайка. Так вот, my grandfather told that Татимбет was very handsome man of medium height, well built, and everything what he used to put on suited him very well. И что бы он ни одевал, все ему шло. У него были большие. He had big bright eyes, reddish hair, nice mustache, and he used to trim it every day. He dressed very nicely. When he was going to get on the horse, all people used to come out to watch this. And when he was riding through an aul or village, not only children but also adults came out of their yurts to look at him. He had a handsome and prideful posture. Tatimbet stands out among township governors on this photo. Later, we will talk about how we found this photo. In the meantime, it is necessary to mention that the boy's childhood coincided with the global political changes in the Great Step. Ну, это джунгарское наследие. Тогда степи были в очень бедственном положении. Они попросили помощи. After Jungar invasion, the Great Step was in distress, and rulers asked for help from the Russian Empire. Nomads wanted to establish diplomatic relationships with Russia, but instead of this, Russian officials came to the step and started to divide the step into districts and townships. According to the charter about Siberian Kyrgyz by Sviransky, to fulfill the charter, Russian officials officials began to look for assistance in the steppe. These assistants were Tor people, Han successors, and Bis, illiterate people of Kyrgyz steppes, and everybody respected them. Kazan Gap, Moshek Uli, Tatimbet's father, was among these people. Honor to Kazan Gap is given with jokes. This race is famous from the cradle. Here all have ranks, wealth and business. Wife here is a colonel. Colonel is a child. Colonel is a child, this was said about Tatimbet. 
Out of three sons, Kazan Gap taught Tatimbiat the step law. He took him on trips and litigations. He comes from Karakisek sub-tribe of Shanshar tribe. Among the representatives of this tribe are Kildibek B, Big Bolat B, Al Shinbai B, Kazibek B, all are his ancestors. When there were disputes of different kinds, being a 9- to 10-year-old kid, Tatimbet could raise his hand and express his opinion bravely. He could fairly make conclusions as a 9- to 10-year-old, and all listened to him. About persons like Tatimbet, people say he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was Abai's relative. Abai's mother, Uljan, came from the same tribe as Tatimbet. Maybe Uncle Tatimbet was an example to Abai. Shokan Balikhan's father, Shingiz, and Abai's father, Kunanbai, were Tatimbet's colleagues. Colonel Tatimbet Kazankapov used his personal mobility. He was the ruler of Nurbike Shanshadov Township of Karkali County from 1842 to 1854. He was not on trial and was not under investigation. In early 1855, a new king ascended on the Russian throne. Representatives of nomads also took part in this event. And it is very curious how Tatimbet was in celebratory delegation. Sabit Mukhanov wrote about this in his book, Flashing Fireball. Actually, the Russian side invited Kunanbai, but he became a religious man and was going to Mecca. So he sent Tatimbet instead of himself. Many bees and township rulers were among members of the delegation, but their names are forgotten. Names of only two people are known, Tatimbet and Daulet Kire. Daulet Kire was a representative of West Kazakhstan. He also was Kwishi. Tatimbet gave excellent performance, played Q, got the silver medal and brought it home. Thus, Tatimbet went down in history. When this delegation decided all questions, then discussed some problems, Tatimbet was alone in the big hall. The hall was partially exposed to the sun rays, maybe for some reasons. One of the king's daughters, I do not remember her name now, my grandmother always used to say beautiful Russian name. So one of the daughters came up to him and was holding an umbrella over him. So he could play without hindrance. His smile was so enlightening, so that the king's daughter could not stand and came up to Tatimbet and held the umbrella until he finished playing a cue. Then she had given him this umbrella, because he came back to his homeland with this umbrella came to Karakali County. And the umbrella was raised high. Sometimes it was kept over him. There was not only an umbrella. It seems that she gave him some jewelry, because when Tatimbet was getting on the horse, he used to raise the edge of his kamzol out her cloth and tacked it with some jewelry. It is like a ballad across the steppe Traubadur. Something in this ballad is true, umbrella which was a rare accessory for Kazakhs. And it's not surprising that exactly the umbrella was mentioned very often in the legends about Tatimbet. Tatimbet gave a sign to his friend, and the friend led his pacer nickname Boz Jorga. Tatimbet began playing Pu, called Karga Jorga, translated as Brown Pacer, and Boz Jorga started walking in front of him in the rhythm of Q, the pace, then slowly, then speeding up the movements. Even the entourage of Governor General was surprised by Tatimbet's skills. Governor General presented Tatimbet his silk umbrella and allowed to tell all their needs and requests. Was Tatimbet a horse trainer? Is it possible? 
A horse cult researcher, Ahmed Toktabai, says the step people manage their horses with, for example, a whistle, subuzgi. There is a possibility that Tatimbet trained his favorite horse to the sounds of the Dombra. What are the rumors about Tatimbet's golden fleece? What he sacrificed to win the reputation of Bui? And what he was once arrested for? This is a photo of a huge piece of copper in the shape of bearskin, which was found not far from Tatimbet's homeland. Mine owners presented this unusual finding to Alexander II. Writer Sapar Gali Begalin mentioned that Tatimbet knew these lands very well and was an indispensable assistant to the first geological expeditions in the studying of Kazakhstan. Tatimbet's grandson, Shaikhi Aksakal, taught me to play the Dombra. He told a lot about him. For example, when Tatimbet stayed in any village and after drinking water there, he used to say, there is gold in this village. With the taste of water, he could define what kind of minerals were underground. Then I asked Shaikhi Aksakal, how did Tatimbet begin gold mining? He answered, when I was a kid, Tatimbet instructed to slaughter a hundred sheep after cutting the sheep's wool. Sheepskin was placed at the river bottom and was pressed down with stones. Skin laid about two or three days, and then it was distributed to women and children. And they combed the skin. Gold was accumulated on the skin. This is the way of gold mining. I was there where the mine was built. It is near the Tunduk River. It was blocked by the dam and the factory was built. This I read in the book of Popov. When researchers started investigating the Kazakh steppes, there was a suggestion that gold could be found in the depths of these steppes. Then the Tsar government began to provide subsidies for the development of gold mines. Tatimbet volunteered to search for gold. Elder people told ethnographer Popov that one elder man met Tatimbet and they washed gold dust and there were grains of gold. Ethnographer Popov and writer Bigalin mentioned that Tatimbet traveled with a group of men and did searches for gold. During these searches, Tatimbet was under the umbrella, which was a gift from the general governor. With wish to explore and develop gold-bearing placers, to find and arrange mining of other metals in Siberian Kyrgyz lands, I have the honor to request your highness to give me prior permission to fulfill these actions. It is interesting that several years earlier, the father of Shokan Valekhanov made the same request on the discovery and development of mining sites. And his request was denied. But over time, the laws changed and Tatimbet's request was accepted favorably by authorities. Local historian Yuri Popov studied the documents and suggested that Tatimbet could not realize his business project. By the way, about the entrepreneurial spirit of Kuishi, there is one amazing incident, which was found in the biography of the famous Kazakh by researcher Talasbek Asem Kulov. His father, Kazan Kap, was promoted to lieutenant in connection with the rebellion of Kenisari Kasimov. Later, Tatimbet started the service. They were in the service paid by the imperial government and received a salary with banknotes. Researcher Talasbek Asimkulov told that these banknotes were of no need in the steppe. Once Tatimbet boiled water in a samovar by lighting the fire with the banknotes and was punished for this. He was sent to Karakali Brig for three days. Perhaps this is the only case when Kazakh B violated Russian law. He strictly followed the steppe law. At the time, his father taught him one important lesson. 
He was Siri. This means he was the man who sang and wrote songs about love. He traveled everywhere and competed with the girls who played better on the Dombra. During these trips, he fell in love with one girl. But it was decided before that she would marry another man. The groom's side even paid dowry. When Tatambet came to his father and said that he loved her and wanted to marry, his father told, Son, you know we are very rich and wealthy. Of course we can pay compensation to the aggrieved party for the return of dowry. She will be your bride. You're going to become B. And if you act unfairly now, then how will you judge people? What people will tell about you? What are the other legends forming the cult of the composer? And what relations do Russian musical classics have? And how is Tatimbet's lifetime portrait found? Q. Koz Basar is a play which to some extent is resembling one of Rachmaninoff's iconic works. And in its intermediate part, there is a phrase of innkeeper in the opera, Boris Godunov by Musagorsky, and was repeated twice. Q. Sulukuldak is played in the third act of the opera, Boris Godunov. I heard it with my own ears. They played Q. Sulukuldak at the beginning of the third act. How to explain the strange coincidence of music about which Zatayevich wrote? Some suggest that during the event of the Tsar's coronation, one of Russian's composers heard the play of Kuishi, and the step melody took deep root inside of the composer. But Musogorsky was only 16 at that time, and Rachmaninoff was not born yet. Others explain that Zatayevich grown up listening to European music, and it was easier for him to compare works of Tatimbet with familiar sounds. Probably those who think that random analogy confirms the truth of primary sources' unity of cultural and folk music are right. Such composers as Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach lived in the 17th century in Europe. This period was the golden age. Famous Russian composers Tchaikovsky, Glinka also lived in the 18th century. The 19th century was considered as the golden age in our Kazakh history. Such Kuishi composers as Kurmengazi, Tatimbiet, Daulet Kire placed Kazakh art to new heights. Kuz were played before Tatimbiet. Comparing that play of Kuz with Tatimbiet's works, we can see that previously Kuishi used to tell about the events of people's lives or stories describing animals and birds. Tatimbet, with his creativity, told about the events in human life, about relationships between people and about things of this kind. Melodic motifs of Tatimbet's works are very complex and require high performance skills. A whole school of Tatimbet's followers was formed. There is a legend about one composer who started a creative contest with a talented lady and demonstrated an unusual trick. Tatimbet played Q and the lady played over him and composed a new one. She was excellent in performance. Tatimbet was playing in different ways, but the lady was not giving up. And then he took off his shoes and played the Q with his big toe. According to the step etiquette, the lady could not afford to hike up the dress and show bare legs, so she lost Aitis Tatimbet. Kuishi Murat Abu Ghazi tells that the story has disciplinary sense. It says, Do not forget 
the men have more opportunities, and there are many restrictions for women. Meanwhile, Kuishi Bilyal Iskakov bets Tatimbet was able to do more. For example, there is Tatimbet's Q, which is called Ukshi Q, translated as heel Q. He played this Q with the heel. I added this Ukshi Q to my book. I found this Q from the old men in the Kazakh village. It was not just a fictional story. He really played the Q with the heel, and that's why the name of the Q is Heel Q. During the contest, Tatimbet used to play with the tip of a blade. Once he competed with the lady Balkia. Balkia was playing the Dombra very skillfully, and then Tatimbet took a blade and began to play it with the tip of his blade. But Balkia failed. She broke a string. Just imagine what a skillful play. The blade is very sharp, but Tatimbet managed to play on the Dombra with it. Even showbiz stars would envy the fame and adoration, which the stepman was surrounded by. There is a legend about how Tatimbet met Q Singer. Her name was Malkara. She was the sister of Abai's mother, that is Uljan's sister. During the contest with Malkara, she fell in love with Tatimbet. She secretly put a nail into the hoof of Tatimbet's horse so that he could not leave the village. The horse came up lame and Tatimbet stayed one more day. And he stayed there as long as it was needed for the horse's leg to heal. This shows what a special person Tatimbet was. Thanks to the researchers, we have an idea about how charismatic Tatimbet looked. You have probably seen this group photo. There is a photo of the delegation which visited St. Petersburg. The township ruler of the Arka Okshkar was among the delegation who went to St. Petersburg. He was dressed in a chapan, or outer cloth, but there were no owl feathers on his head. So many misidentified him as Tatimbet. Later, academician Alke Margulan went to the archives in St. Petersburg. There he found the photo and it was clearly written which one of the delegates was Tatimbet. Here is the photo, where he is in a fur hat. Here on the group photo, he is standing to the side. Tatimbet died in the prime of life. He fell gravely ill, and according to different reports, he died at the age of 45 to 47. People's favorite man hardly could imagine how their origin affected his descendants. Some of them were under repression. The biography of Kuishi was corrected, keeping the nobility of Tatembet's tribe in secret. This is my grandfather, his forehead. Eyes, ears, this is my grandfather, Shaikhi Musathayev, his son, Samat, my father. My grandfather used to say that Samat looks like the grandfather Tatembet because he had big eyes and was very brave and could quickly take some actions. He said that only Tatembet used to do so. Fortunately, we are gradually founding and learning Tatembet's cues. The image of an extraordinary person, B, diplomat, poet, and musician continues to live, and further details appear in folk mythology. legend about how the stepman, Siri, conquered the heart of the Russian Tsar's daughter, still alive to this day. This and other stories about the wise bee, charismatic Kui Shi, shows how much people loved him and were proud of the great step native Tatin Bet. Mm -hmm.